The bird is flying with a speed of 18.0 meters per second over the water and accidentally drops a 2.00 kilogram fish. Assuming the altitude of the bird is 5.40 meters and disregarding friction, what is the speed of the fish when it hits the water? We have a flying fish, it doesn't really matter that it's dropped by a bird, because all we need to know is that the fish is flying at a block at a speed of 18 meters per second. We know the mass of the fish, we know the initial height of the fish. It is 5.4 meters, and it is above the water. We're going to class, is there friction in this problem? So is energy conserved? Yes. Yes, anytime there's no friction, we have conservation of energy. So mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. Whenever you are using this equation, before you can use the equation, you need to, bless you, identify your initial point, you need to identify your final point, and you need to set a zero line. Because if you're going to talk about gravitational potential energy, you have to identify your zero line. So, our initial point is right here in the picture. Our final point is right here in the picture, right before it strikes the water. And our zero line is our horizontal line which we will set at the surface of the water. So we usually identify our initial and final points in the zero line in a picture because it's easiest to identify it that way. Matt. Is that how you have us identify it? Yes, I think that's why I'm identifying specifically this right here. So right. yeah, a picture. Pictures are a great way to describe things. Okay. Three different types of mechanical energy. Chattis, what are they? Um, there's kinetic. Kinetic energy? Yeah. All aspects of potential energy. And work. Uh, work is not one of the types of no. mechanical energy. Has, wait. <laughs> Victoria Albrow? Gravitational. Gravitational potential energy. Got to get the whole thing. Gravitational potential energy. So. We have initial kinetic energy, initial elastic potential energy, and initial gravitational potential energy. We also have final kinetic energy, plus we have elast final elastic potential energy, plus we have final gravitational potential energy. So we can substitute in equations for all of these. We have one half mass times velocity initial squared plus one half times kx initial squared plus mgh initial equals one half times the mass times velocity final squared plus one half kx final squared plus mgh final. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, people. This little equation works out to be this giant equation. Work it out. Actually composed of three mechanical energies to begin with, three mechanical energies to end with, initial and final, substituting in all the equations. Your job at this time is to figure out which ones cancel and why. Who could tell me one of these um, types of mechanical energies, initial or final, that cancels and why? Well, we can cross off because it's zero. Stuart? The elastic potential energy. Which one, initial or final? Because in this particular problem, there is no spring. So we can cross off both of these. I agree. There is one more that cancels, Eric. Well, you know that uh, the gravitational potential of energy, H is zero. At Where? Um, the zero line. At right. Is that the initial or final point? Final. So at the final point, height final equals zero. So gravitational potential energy final is zero. So what we get now is one half mv initial squared plus mgh initial equals one half mass times velocity final squared. That is right. Everyone brought mass to the party. We can be equitable. We can take mass from everyone. We get one half times velocity initial squared plus gh initial equals one half times velocity final squared. Therefore, velocity final equals multiplying both sides by two, uh, two gh initial plus velocity initial squared the square root of. So notice, we started with this equation up here. 
and we ended with this. So your job when you, when you work with conservation of energy is to figure out what cancels out so that you can end up with a much simpler equation because this is rather difficult to work with. We have all this information. We have two, the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 here on planet Earth. The height initial was 5.4, plus the velocity of the Earth. Speed initial was 18, which we're going to square. We get the square root of that to get the velocity final. Twenty point seven three two five with sig figs. We'll go with twenty point seven meters per second. The, so the velocity final of a fish right before it impacts the water is twenty point seven meters per second. So the velocity final of the fish right before it strikes the water is twenty point seven meters per second. I feel like I've said this one before, Matt. Uh, the fish I agree the fish is moving down. So what just let's start with what are we missing? Um, direction. direction, right? Remember velocity is a vector, so we need a direction. So have we found the final velocity of the fish? No. No, what have we found? We found the magnitude. The magnitude. Final we figured speed. out the final speed of the fish. What do they ask us to find in the problem? The speed. So they ask us to find the final speed. So it's important to understand that we actually only can find the final speed in this problem. We actually cannot find the final velocity. This problem looks like one that we would have solved before using projectile motion, right? It looks very similar, but we cannot solve this problem using projectile motion. Who can tell me what is missing from the givens in the problem that makes it so that we actually cannot use projectile motion to solve this problem? Adam. Uh, there is no velocity in both the x and y directions. It gets to that, but I want to be more clear. Right? So it comes back to the initial velocity. What do we know about the, or what are we missing about the initial velocity? Sam? An angle? We don't have a direction. Right? All they give us is the initial speed. We don't know whether the, the bird's moving straight up or horizontally or at an angle. So we actually couldn't break the initial velocity of the fish into its components and list what we know in the x and y directions. So we could not solve this using projectile motion. We can use it, use conservation of energy to solve it because energy is a scalar. But because of that, we can never figure out the direction using conservation of energy only because we only get a scalar as an answer. It will not give us direction. 